You're very welcome back to the Six O'Clock Show. As we mentioned earlier in the show, today we're launching our week-long Donate for Dementia campaign. Now, for every person diagnosed with dementia, three others are directly affected. And as someone who understands the ripple effect that it can have on families is our very own Greg O'Shea. Greg, how are you doing? Hey, Maureen, what's going on? How are you? Hey, Greg. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, it's uh, not an easy uh, thing to discuss, uh, particularly when it relates to your own family, but it's worth sharing your story uh, with everyone, particularly given that we're doing Donate for Dementia this week. People know you as a rugby player, of course. Uh, we know you from here. We, yep. know, we know you from Love, the Love Island as well, of course. <laughs> That's at the bottom of the list of everything, the Love Island. That, <laughs> right, OK, yeah. Uh, but you've also lent your su support to the Alzheimer Society of Ireland because... Uh, your late grandmother had suffered from dementia. Um, talk us through, Greg, uh, I suppose, your experience and at what point did you and your family notice the change in her? Yeah, so when I did the whole Love Island thing, I decided that I'd use my platform for something good. Yeah. So uh, not, there's probably no family in Ireland, really, that has been touched by Alzheimer's in some shape or form. And my own grandmother had Alzheimer's dementia. And uh, it, it came on really, really quickly. It was kind of at the Christmas time uh, before the summer when I went to Love Island that we kind of noticed that she just wasn't as witted as she usually would be. She's a really strong, independent woman and it was just a little delay here and there. I might forget your face and we kind of realised then. But um, she lived by herself all the way up until uh, she she passed away. So she, she kept fighting and she was a strong woman, but it just kind of gets with their uh, mm. mentality. And it's quite sad to see, but sure, that's just the way it happened. Uh, as you said there, you kind of noticed it at Christmas and then she passed away when you were in Love Island. That was actually quite a short space of time. So once someone is kind of diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia, Greg, they kind of become defined by that towards the end of their life. But it really is important to remember the person that they were. So can you tell us a bit about your granny? What sort of a woman was she? Yeah, so she was so strong. As I said, she was really independent. She lived by herself all the way up until her death. And she used to take care of me and my sisters. And she was just a really tough woman, really strict woman, but loved the family. And um, she would have loved the fact that I went on Love Island and that I had a radio gig, that I did the six o'clock show at some, one stage, that I was on the Late Late Show. She loved her TV. And so, um, like in any Irish granny, and it was just unfortunate that dementia got her. And uh, she just kind of deteriorated very, very quickly. But the family kind of got around her and allowed her to live by herself. And someone would call over every day and, you know, for a cup of tea, just to check, check on her, make sure it's all right. Mm. And my mother really took good care of her. And uh, it's just sad that there's nearly 60,000 people around Ireland living with dementia or Alzheimer's. And uh, we just got to look out for them more. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned her, her independence and her strength and uh, I, that she would have been uh, so proud of you on the Late Late Show and, uh, on the, you know, here and, and your, your career. Um, how did she take it at the time? Uh, not just you as a family, but how did she take the, the diagnosis? Yeah, so what happened was she had a stroke, which just kind of accelerated it crazy. And she lost the use of her mouth. And, and she, it was just, it, it's hard to kind of think about it now because mm. she just went from such a strong independent woman to needing a lot of care. And then when the stroke happened, we sent her to the Nina Hospital where it took great care of her. And then when she got a little bit worse again, we sent her to Talbot in Malahide up here in Dublin. And it was 24 hour care uh, just until she passed away. But I remember that I was told that uh, when I was in Love Island, the night she was passing away, the nurses put on Love Island in the background and she was obviously lying down and wasn't like with it. But uh, she might've heard my voice in the background, which was a really nice thought on the night that she passed away. And you were, as you mentioned, you were in Love Island. You know, you were on the screen in her room. When that all happened, were you worried? Because you knew that she had been sick. Were you worried you wouldn't be allowed to come home? Yeah, I was worried. But she passed away on the Friday and they didn't tell me till the Sunday. But that was because my mother decided to do that in the sense that I couldn't do anything for the two days. Anyway, they were organising the funeral and all that stuff. So let me do the show. And when I needed to come home, tell me and it all would just happen really quickly and ITV gave me the option to to fly home and I did fly home with two bodyguards went and buried buried my grandmother and then flew straight back in and went back into the villa so I was lucky to get the best of both worlds um, even though it's a very sad thing to happen mm -hmm. uh, I, I got to bury her which is which is great for an Irish person to be able to bury uh, your family member it must yeah. have been very tough going back then into the show or into the kind of the because it's a pretty intense environment to, into the programme uh, after going through all that, was it? 
Yeah, it was, but it's actually worked as a great distraction, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> like, yeah. My family said to me, why would you not go back in the show? Are you going to sit at home in the living room and watch Love Island with us and be miserable, or do you actually want to be on the show? Yeah. So they were right. I went back in, and it, and it worked out really well. And obviously, as everyone kind of says, uh, my, my grandmother would have wanted me to go back in, you know what I mean? Of course she would have. So I went on, and I'm sure she was looking at me and uh, was proud of what happened. Absolutely. Still stuck man. on the two bodyguards at the at the funeral. That's that is not I an everyday. Them. He needs them. Every, he didn't need them. I know uh, he needed them. We all know who she lad. was. He's only a soft but lad. there but are the there are thirty people a day diagnosed with dementia in Ireland, which is just something I I hadn't realised. So it is important, Greg, to, to lend support and and to get the word out there about this. Of course it is. Yeah, mm. there's around sixty thousand people around Ireland with um, Alzheimer's, some form of it, and. There's so many charities missing out on funding, but Alzheimer's gets so much from their tea day. They get so much from their memory ribbon day. And it's been nearly over a year of it now. So uh, we really need to get funds in so we can help these people like my grandmother to uh, deal with dementia and deal with the Alzheimer's and finish off their life in a more respectful way yeah. than may be happening at the moment, you know? Absolutely. Greg, thanks a million for talking to us. Uh, Greg O'Shea, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Greg. No worries. Thanks for having nice me. Nice to meet you, ma'am.